Welcome back everyone to the Hello World Guide. This is another episode of the Raycaster Gaming C++ series and in this video we are going to add some collision detection functionality for our player. So currently if I run make, uh, you can see that uh, if it actually compiles, so you can see that if I move around I can like actually just go through the walls and I can go out of the map if I want to and uh, yeah it's, it's actually uh, not that uh, great to be honest. So. Uh, we, we cl clearly this is not what we want and you can see it also leads to some weird artifacts o occasionally because you are not supposed to be outside of the map boundaries so how do we go ahead and fix that by adding some collision detection into our engine so for that I figured out that uh, currently we are doing uh, our you know players position in a different coordinate system and our maps in a different coordinate system and that uh, is going to be less convenient so I think it would be much better to just uh, have a single coordinate system for everything so to do that first of all I'm going to open up player.h and then player.cpp and in here uh, you can see that we have got our uh, move speed at 100 we are going to make it so that our player is not represented in any specific map grid size so for that let's actually deal with the player later first of all we are gonna uh, open up our map.h and uh, uh, also map.cpp map.cpp and in here we are going to change this so that we no longer have any cell size because uh, there there is no need of cell size if we do not have any separate coordinate system for the map so we are going to remove both of these we are going to remove the getter function along with that and we are uh, since we don't actually need our cell size anymore we can remove this and since this is just a default constructor we can just uh, say it equal to default and we don't have to define it in map.cp we are going to remove this constructor and uh, the only place where we need the cell size is when drawing so for that uh, in the draw function we will take in cell size as an argument because we actually need to uh, you know have a cell size relative to the window for drawing so we will implement that so I'm going to say float cell size like this and yeah that uh, will work and it's giving us another problem that this is uh, not uh, supposed to be here so we can remove that as well now uh, we'll get problems of course in a lot of areas so first of all I'm gonna open up uh, uh, main.cpp and in main.cpp you can see we've got our uh, map we are defining is 48 48 we uh, you know we are specified with the cell size we are not going to do that instead we are gonna just initialize our map normally not do anything and for the player's position since now we'll represent the player also in map coordinates we are gonna change this to 1.2 instead of 50 because 50 will be like out of the map so we are gonna change this to 1.2 now let me open up uh, player.cpp and in here we'll need to change the move speed of the player to a much smaller value. Uh, so we're gonna uh, set this to for example 2.5 uh, for example and uh, that's going to be much more accurate and you can just divide it by 48 if you want to get exact results I just did an approximation. And uh, now the, uh, the other major change is going to be inside of the renderer. You can see it's giving us an error because there is no member name get size. Well, we can just set the position to player dot position directly since now we don't actually uh, need any uh, map size or anything. So I'm gonna turn this off and uh, yeah, that will get our render working. And uh, the only other thing we need to do is in our editor. So actually, I'm gonna open up editor dot cpp and in here you can see we have got our editor initialize function. Well, we are gonna create a const expression float here called cell size which we'll just set to, uh, for example, uh, let's just set it to 48, the value it was before. So we are gonna set it to 48 and then I'm gonna go down here where we are actually, you know, using this. So if I go down here all the way uh, here, you can see it's giving us actually, uh, yeah, it's giving us some error all the, um, over five places in which we are using this. So we are gonna just use our cell size here because uh, now this cell size does not represent anything in the world. It only is like a uh, window thing. So it does not actually represent anything special in the actual game world. So that's uh, great. And we are gonna just use cell size here like that. And uh, we need to add this here. And uh, that works. And you can see it's saying that map.draw has too few arguments because it did not supply our cell size. We can do that here quite easily. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all the change we need to make. So if I run make right now, what you should see is that we get practically the exact same result as before. We get our map, we can move around it, and I can open up the editor, I can move around it, I can edit the map, and uh, uh, everything works like we expected it to. But now we have got it working in a different coordinate system, and now we are going to modify it so that uh, we also do collision detection in here. So I'm gonna exit that, 
And now for implementing collision detection, we are gonna go ahead and open up player.cpp. And in here, we are gonna uh, go down here. Now, uh, you might be tempted to just perform collision detection really simply, but uh, uh, first, let me just get this radiance and I'm gonna make it outside of this if statement. And we are gonna have another value here, sf vector uh, to f called move, which will represent a move vector. And uh, in here, we'll uh, initialize it, by the way, to the default value. And then uh, we'll add, uh, so when we're saying position.x, we're gonna say move.x. And when here we are saying position dot y, we're gonna say move dot y. And uh, another thing is that we'll just take the whole of this and completely remove that. Now I'm going to go ahead and copy this and also paste this to allow backwards movement. So for this, we are going to go here, turn this to S, this to negative, and this to negative as well. And that works. And you might say, uh, well, we can just say move multiply equal our del, and we, you know, we can do that uh, later. So we don't need to perform it, uh, you know, in each step. We can just uh, add the correct cosine value, and then in the end, we can multiply this by move speed and also delta time. So once we have multiplied it by that, you might be just tempted to say uh, position plus equal move, and that will give you the same result. So let's just first of all check that real quick. And you can see that it works now, and now I can also move backwards along with forward, and that uh, works. But still, of course, no collision detection. Now, a naive approach might be like this. So before we add this, you might say, if uh, map dot get, uh, let me, actually, now we need to change the signature of this function. So I'm going to open a player dot h, and in the update function, we are going to take a const reference to our map as well, because we need to actually access data from the map. So we are going to go ahead, copy this go here and uh, uh, paste that actually uh, no we are uh, inside of here so we just need to pass in our map and uh, we need to paste this in here so i'm going to go up here and say const map and map and we take a const reference to prevent it from copying all of the data because that would be quite expensive so with that you can just say something like uh, map dot get map cell and for the x, you might say, uh, since we now are in the same coordinate system, we don't need to do any division. You might say position.x plus move.x. And in here, you might say position.y plus move.y. And in the layer, we are going to say uh, map colon colon layer wall, uh, like that. And you might check if this is equal to 0. And if that's the case, you might just um, call this, fun uh, you know, just add that to this. Now this is approach will not actually work that well for a number of reasons. So what you will see is that if I go here and I collide with this, now I can't move in this direction either. Like uh, also there are some artifacts we'll deal with these later. The reason is, uh, but the main problem is that we, when I am like with this wall, I can't li li really, I am pressing the forward button, but I'm not being able to move in that direction. The reason is that we need to check the X and Y axis separately. So for that, we are gonna, go here and remove that and just do position.x check and in here we are going to only add position.x now uh, we are going to copy this and paste that here and in here we are going to not uh, add anything to position.x we are going to pass position.x as is while for position.y we are going to say move.y and if that's the case we are going to just uh, add move.y to this so if I compile and run this now, what you should see is that I can now slide along the wall. So this is basically wall sliding. However, you can see still there are very notable artifacts here. Now the reason is that our ray is kind of get mess gets uh, messed up when we are like too close to the wall. So we are practically like touching the wall at the exact point as the wall because currently our player is infinitely small. Now that's of course not the behavior that we desire. We want our player to actually have some size. Uh, to kind of exaggerate the effect, I'm gonna give the player a large size for now. So we are gonna go here create a const expression called player size and I'm going to set it to 0.5 for now just to kind of see that it's working and then we'll decrease it to the appropriate amount. Now in here how are we going to actually assign this uh, size or whatever uh, you know use it. So for that we'll need to calculate our x offset and our y offset. Now you might just say x offset is equal to player speed however player size actually and however this is a bridge of a problem because uh, when we add position.x to move.x if move.x is negative then we want to subtract this. So we are going to check if our move.x is greater than 0. If that's the case then player size uh, else we are going to just say negative player size. And for a y offset we are going to do the same thing uh, except that this time we check the move.y. And uh, I'm going to go here and when checking for move.x, we are going to add x offset to this, like that. And when checking for move.y, we are going to add y offset to this, 
like that and this will give us our player a bit of like uh, a colliding box so if i go here you can see that now the player stops at a certain distance from the wall of course this distance is currently huge so our player seems like very large but uh, we are going to uh, tune it down to i think 0.1 would be a good value and now you should see that we have perfect working collision detection in our game so you can see i can slide along the walls we have got collision detection i cannot go through the walls and no artifacts appear either so yeah with that we have got this working so yeah guys this is pretty much it for this video i'll see you in the next one in which we'll start implementing uh, uh, sprites and like actually having in world objects so stay tuned for that make sure to like and subscribe as well and share this video with other people and i'll see you in the next one and bye